everybody. We're on our way to the Hardyville Pioneer Cemetery in Bullhead City, Arizona. <laughs> Arizona was founded over 150 years ago. From freezing temperatures in the winter to extreme heat in the summer, it was a hard life. Now called Bullhead City, Hardyville was founded and named after early resident and politician William Hardy. In 1864, his personal worth was estimated to be $40,000. That made him the second richest man in Arizona at the time. Hardy spent $35,000 to build a toll road from Hardyville to Prescott, which was the capital of Arizona at the time. A boom in population occurred as the profitability and in mining increased. In the 1870s, the town consisted of a blacksmith shop, general store, a billiard hall, and a saloon. From 1852 to 1909, steamboats made regular trips up the Colorado River to bring supplies to the mines and surrounding areas. According to a newspaper article, in November of 1872, the entire town was destroyed by fire, with the exception of one single adobe house. The loss was believed to be in the range of $150,000. In 1877, the Southern Pacific Railroad bought out Johnson's Colorado Steam Navigation Company. By 1878, the SP had built rail lines to Maricopaville, resulting in all rail traffic moving away from Hardyville. Sometime around 1883, I believe it was the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, was built from Needles to Kingman, Arizona, bypassing Hardyville altogether. By the early 1900s, mining in the area had started to cease, and it eventually became a ghost town. This cemetery is the only surviving significant remnant of Hardyville. It's estimated that the cemetery contains anywhere from 16 to two dozen graves, each covered with a pile of cobblestones as originally created. From what I read, the graves are unmarked because the University of Arizona had moved the grave markers one time and they were never put back. But according to the museum, the markers were being stolen from the cemetery. Local resident Vern Peterson, who lived where the Safeway store is now, took the last two surviving markers. They're on display at the museum. The markers belong to G.E. Matthews, who died just short of his 15th birthday, and A.O. Perkins, who died of heart disease. Another post I read online said that cemetery once ended up in the Safeway parking lot across the street one time during a heavy rain. One person said he was on his way to work and had to dodge coffins that ended up on Highway 95. Well, that makes for a great storyline, and I'd love to leave it in there. In reality, no coffins ever ended up on Highway 95, but there was one coffin that started to kind of uh, poke out onto the side of the hill up by the cemetery. They did an archaeological dig, and two coffins were dug up and reburied farther into the cemetery. In 1983, Approval was given to build the concrete wall on the front of the hill to keep the cemetery from sliding. Sometime later, this mural was painted on the wall. Unfortunately, death was no stranger to these settlers living in this western desert town. There's so many stories here. For example, William Tuttle was a stagecoach driver. When he arrived across the river from Hardyville, he was supposed to fire a shot to summon the ferry. Instead, a passenger fired a shot, 
hitting the back of William's head, killing him instantly. William Taylor and Johnny Killian were killed by Indians. Adelida Amaro died in childbirth at age 16. Robert Keflin drowned in the river. Eduardo Bernal was a blacksmith. He was the victim of a homicide. At first glance, some may think that this cemetery is a bit overgrown and rough around the edges, but its history serves as a reminder of the once thriving shipping port and mining town known as Hardyville. Oh, when I go, all the devils will be dancing in the aisle. I float around and around and see the people for a while. Maybe I'll stop by and say hello. Save a seat there.